Today's discussion is going to really focus a lot on how do we do this? How do we create an unambiguous specification that is going to go to a software developer in which they're aware of how to read it and at the same time it becomes the documentation for moving on. Let's look at that and see how we do it. Before we move on, a part of the concept of the logical equivalent is something called decomposition. And in all of the things that we're going to do today, we're going to see that decomposition is the fundamental component of how we do analysis. And decomposition is, is, is quite simple in, in terms of concepts. So let's look at a very simple uh, example. This is an marker. But as soon as I do this, I can now suggest to you that I have a marker and a cap. Another way of saying it is perhaps I've decomposed this marker into its lowest form. Think of another uh, correlation. If I were to look at an automobile, I would say that's an automobile. Yet if I was to decompose that automobile, that is break it down to its lowest parts, I would have thousands of parts all over the place. But what's important about understanding those parts is that I would find that I could reuse some of those components in other areas, which of course is a fundamental concept of reusability and object orientation. So if I took the car apart and I had a Michelin tire that was 14 inches, is it not true that that 14 inch Michelin tire could be used on other cars? Indeed, how many parts in a car are used in others? Yet looking at the entire car, it's very difficult to see that. So if I am an engineer, a software engineer, an analyst, I am going to need to decompose anything I hear in the physical world so that I can determine what fundamental parts make up lots of things, I will find lots of redundancies because of the physical world. The question is, how do I do it? And what I'm going to suggest to you today is that it is a form, it is an absolute form of mathematical breakdown. Let me give you an example, something that you've learned in school. Suppose I gave you a problem when you were in grade school and I said, divide 1284 by 5. First of all, what would we call this? We would call it long division. And what would we do? We would apply a formula called long division, which went something like this. You would say 5 does not go into 1, so that I would move over and combine these two and say 5 into 12 goes twice. I would procedurally put the 2 up here. I'd put a 10 here. I would subtract this. 5 cannot go into 2, so I would drop the 8. 5 goes into 28 5 times. That would give me 25. I would drop the 3. 5 cannot go into 3, so I would drop the 4 down. 5 goes into 34 6 times, which gives me 30, and ultimately a remainder 4. So I would now say that 1284 divided by 5 is 256 remainder 4. Well, I might suggest to you that these two are equivalent. They just look differently. But to get this, I went through a formula called long division, which in my opinion, as we'll discuss as we go on, is nothing more than a form of decomposition. And let me explain how this correlates back to what we were talking about. If you said to somebody, 1284 divided by 5 is 256 remained to 4, and they said, I don't believe you, what would you do? Well, the fact is, you would show them your long division, or the process, the architecture that you went through to come up with this. And is it not true that I might suggest that this is also the documentation of how you got this number? So could one say that long division is a formula? It's a form of decomposition which renders a result but is also self-documenting. And that's what I want to build on. Because if we can apply this same concept to doing software engineering and analysis, then we 
could meet the requirement that I've put forth, which is giving you a blueprint that's not ambiguous. And there's certainly no ambiguity here. You cannot argue what has occurred. It's also true that if you were not around to defend it, anybody, as long as they could see the division steps that you took, could prove that how you got here or, incidentally, perhaps how you made a mistake. So this becomes moving on. Another very important concept. While this is the documentation, once I get 256 remainder 4, it is the answer. It is what I need to move forward. So this becomes the steps necessary to generate the answer. And at the same time, it becomes self-documenting. Wouldn't it be nice if we could replicate that same situation? And one other thing, getting back to the architect example that I've just given you. Let's now make a change, a modification and enhancement. I come back and I say, whoops, I made a mistake. It was really 1294. Well, many of you have seen cases or have done them yourself where it's so obvious what the change would be that you don't go through the formula again and you just put a new answer. It's a shortcut. Dangerous. Something we never want to do in software development. Because if that happens, what happens to our documentation? It's no longer dependable. So when there is a change, what do you do? I've always put it this way, you do what you're supposed to do. And that is you go back where the change occurs. And you redivide, just like you went back to the blueprint and made the change. Instead of being 28, this is now 29. Instead of this being 34, it's now 44. And instead of this being 30, it now becomes 40. And this becomes an 8. Now again, almost all of us could have seen that result without redividing. But if we would have done that and just changed this to 258, then our documentation no longer would have been worth anything. And by the way, when you take shortcuts, what very often happens, you make mistakes. We don't want that to happen. So if I was going to take a position on how to create an unambiguous specification, which I could give to a software developer, they all must, in some way or form, work through what I would call decomposition.